And then what about today? Like, how are we seeing this type of collaboration? Because like you said, sometimes they're seen as very opposing, but then it could also be us kind of to categorize different things so that we can understand them better. But sometimes this categorization goes the opposite of its effect. This is very true. And the categorization, I believe, is not something we're going to dispel. We're not going to say art and science are the same, nor do I think we should. I think the hyphen in art and science is really interesting um, because it's bringing two things together. And I think, like I said, with and what Wellwell pointed out with the specializations, is it is two different expertise coming together. And you see really amazing results from that. I've seen them mostly in residencies. Um, you have artists in residence or science and scientists in residence. I think in 2017, you had on a more um, uh, famous scale, um, you had, oh, of course, I'm blanking on his name, but at the uh, Neuroscience Institute at Columbia University, you had um, a prolific... Uh, contemporary artist. <laughs> See if I can remember. Um, we can attach the link afterwards. Don't yeah. worry. Yeah. Okay. Or if he, you he wanted to it. pull anything up to show us too, that also works. Feel free to do that at any time. It's really bothering me. I'll, I'll give the link. But um, someone from like big in the contemporary art world um, who had shown at you, you know museums just around the world, working with under the supervision of neuroscientists famous neuroscientist Eric Handel, um, Jeff Koons, um, the artist Jeff Koons working with Eric Handel, or not directly, but under supervision. You have these great videos that came out of the conversations between them, and he did these works where it was these reflective sculptures, and it was the work of the neuroscientists talking about their work, and Jeff Koons being inspired by it, and then um, I think he even exhibited it or put them up in the neuroscience lab so that it reflected other things, um, which is very fascinating and the whole uh, investigation into perception and how the material reacts. So a, a residency, I think, is a great way we're seeing today. They give us space. And like I said, I think having that space is really important. Um, the space basically says, okay, you are allowed to enter this world because we feel very cut off. And when you have a space that says artists and scientists can come here, for the purpose of both being here, um, you, they're able to open up, and that is where I think you have these amazing collaborations come through. Um, I remember one of the um, exhibitions I did in 2018 at Concordia with the Art Matters Festival. Um, I curated alongside um, two others. We did, uh, it was called Disconnect uh, Alienate. Um, uh, it was called Disconnect, the Alienation of Art and Science. And um, we had these amazing students presenting kind of, it's like the germination of their artistic careers. And um, I'm still in touch with a few of them today. And there was this space we basically said, we want your work because it is at this weird intersection between art, science, technology. It doesn't yet have its, its categorizations, you know, just a couple of years ago now. Um, but one in particular, in particular, um, Geoffrey Beauregard, um, he did these great drawings, um, kind of in a classic Enlightenment style um, of drawing uh, different plants in his backyard, very accurately, as you would see in natural history textbooks. And then he also drew these um, individual people kind of going around it, and it was a series. And as the people kind of, these little people enveloped it, it started to die. And he was, a, he was studying to be a biologist. And he switched into a fine arts track. But with him, he carried his, um, the ethics and all of his uh, feelings about this very scientific field that he didn't have a place to put it. Um, only later did he find it. And again, in a space where you could. Um, and Concordia University is a very interdisciplinary university. So, I mean, those are just a couple examples, but there's so many just all over the world. I mean, if you look at Le Laboratoire in Paris, which was founded by um, David Edwards, who wrote a phenomenal book called Art Science in the Post-Google Generation, um, Art Science Creativity in the Post-Google Generation, sorry. He does fascinating case studies of individuals who have transitioned from art to science or science to art, put themselves in both um, camps, and found that 
um, they can, when given the opportunity, kind of bring them together into these insane discoveries. I have, I jotted it down because I didn't want to forget their name, but um, one of the examples that he mentions is, um, oh yeah, Diana Dabby. Um, and so Diana Dabby was a concert pianist, um, who read a series of articles on, uh, future trends in, um, music that was written by engineers. And the, she thought that she might be able to pioneer her art better by understanding the science of her art. And so she went to study electrical engineering at MIT and only after struggling for, um, years with a complex complexities of chaos theory <laughs> did you see a parallel between the patterns that surrounded the theory of a mathematical strange attractor and those of musical variation on theme so she mapped the notes onto the solutions to chaos equations and not only provided a new way to view chaos but then a new composition technique as well so i mean his book i would highly recommend it if you're interested in looking at individuals that carry the art and science within them but i do think it's a lot more common and um probably more accessible to a, a, a wide variety of practitioners to have those residency spaces um with tools that you can use to bring your art and science uh inquiries together because it can feel quite daunting especially if you are maybe an artist who's never um who's wanted to approach the sciences but you feel like it's just it's it's too boarded up you don't know how to knock on the door and likewise for scientists who don't know how to approach the arts because they have been told maybe to focus their research and their inquiries in only one direction um and that it their direction has to matter you don't often hear science for science sake nowadays <laughs> so um on both sides i think having that common space is just immensely important that's it for this episode of Beyond Codes and Aesthetics. If you like what you heard, you can subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever else you listen to your podcasts. Also, please take a moment to rate and review this podcast. It will help other listeners discover what we're doing. Beyond Codes and Aesthetics is produced by Kohei and translations on Himalaya podcasts by Will Jung. Take care and see you next time.